You may have heard of Twitch before, a popular live streaming service typically geared towards gamers, but ever since we've all been stuck at home, desperately craving live entertainment, Twitch has proven to be a major player in the live streaming space, not just for gamers now, but for musicians and artists and any other organization looking to live stream their broadcast and connect with their viewers. What's also really good about Twitch is that they have an API available if you're interested in pulling down raw data from the platform. Like what are the most popular live streams happening right now, you can get that data really easily. You can also look up details about particular popular live streamers, get their list of followers, and also get all of their past videos. It's sort of like YouTube where an author can publish videos from the past, you can look up that data as well, all with this free API. This is the Twitch developer portal, I'll put a link to this below, and all you need to do to access it is just have a regular Twitch account and log in with that, which is free. You then need to create an application, which I've done over here. You just click register your application, they'll ask you some questions. For uh, redirect URL, you can just put in HTTP colon slash slash localhost. If you're just doing for development purposes, we're just gonna be doing server to server data scraping in this case. If you wanna do something more advanced like OAuth and connect on behalf of a user, it gets more complicated. Uh, we're not talking about client apps in this video, we're just gonna talk about how to build a server to server integration and pull down public data from Twitch. Once you create your app, you should see a screen like this and you'll have a client ID and a client secret you can press this button to get. Once you have access to these two things, we're ready to scrape some data from Twitch. So let's go up here to the land of API documentation, which everyone loves reading. So you'll immediately see you can do a lot of advanced things like make extensions for games and chatbots and all this other stuff here. So we don't need to get overwhelmed. I'm gonna show you exactly the two things you need to look for here to just scrape public data. The first of which is you need to get an access token to query the API with. So if you go back to the docs and you go under authentication, we need to go down to getting tokens for OAuth and we need to go to this one over here. We want to get app access tokens. We want a token for our app, which is not going to be tied to any specific Twitch user. This is in comparison to a lot of times these user tokens where a uh, game developer will ship out their app to the client and then the client puts their Twitch login and password and then the auth token is on behalf of that client. We're not doing that. We're just doing app access token. So it's a lot easier. Just click this link. I'll put a link here below so you don't get too confused. And we'll see the endpoint here. We need to make a post request to this URL and we pass in our client ID and our client secret, which we have over here on the other page where we registered our app and we'll get back an access token. That's all we need to continue further and then we can begin using the API. I'm gonna do a quick demo here. This is the Steve C data platform wrapper around the Twitch API. I have a couple endpoints pre-built on this platform that you can use and it'll automatically aggregate all the data for you and export in CSV. Full disclosure, I own this product. It's a paid product. You don't have to use it. I'm just gonna use it as a guide to show you how to access their API. You can do all of this on your own with your own code. So I'm gonna put in my client ID. So just go back here and copy your client ID and put it in here and then your client secret. So I'm gonna put in some bogus text right now. And if you wanna do this on your own, you can click this direct tab and Steve C will give you the curl command you can use. But I'm gonna put in my real secret right now. So I'm gonna get it from here. You have to click new secret and then confirm, copy the new secret, put it in here. And then I'm gonna run this through Steve C. It's gonna parse back the request and give me my real access token. So it's gonna show up over here. It'll be blurred out in the video. And then copy this, put it in like a text editor for the time being so you can use it with subsequent endpoints. So once you have that out of the way, we can then proceed to the API documentation. So go over here and scroll down a little bit and go under the new Twitch API, not to be confused with Twitch API v5, which is outdated. So make sure you're on the new Twitch API here. So here they're gonna to talk to us more about authentication. So some of this is outdated. This won't work because now you need an OAuth token like I showed you, so you can just ignore this. So let's just skip ahead to the reference section. And over here, we're gonna see all the different endpoints we can use. So let's get a list of popular streams going on right now. We can click on this get streams endpoint and it's gonna show us what this will do. So there's some optional query parameters. These are for pagination. Uh, what we wanna do though is we can give it a user name, uh, a Twitch user and it'll give us back their active live stream. So this is useful, like let's say you have a handful of curated Twitch users and you wanna see if they have any active streams, you can put in multiple names on this endpoint and you'll get back all of their active streams. So this would be handy if like you're curious what's going on from all these Twitch users that I'm interested in, see if they have anything going on and you can watch the stream. 
Then you can scroll down to response fields. You'll see what the data you get back will look like. They give you when the stream started, a thumbnail image URL, which is kind of cool, the title of the stream and a few other things. What's cool is you can get the viewer count, the live number of people watching the stream. So if you keep doing this like every five minutes or so, you can build yourself like a trend graph and see like where the attention is going over time, which is kind of neat. What's also cool that I figured out is if you don't send a user ID, Twitch will just send you back all of the most popular streams on all of Twitch at that point in time. So for example, this is the Steve C data wrapper around this endpoint. I just showed you the live streams endpoint. We can see the endpoints here, which lines up with the API documentation over here. So you can build your own endpoints if you want. And this, I simplified how you need to access this. So what's funky about these endpoints is you also always have to put in your client ID. So go back and get your client ID, put it in here, and then go get your auth token, which you got from the other endpoint and put it in here. And then if you leave this blank, like I'm gonna do right now, you're just gonna get back a global list of all the popular streams on Twitch ordered by their popularity, how many people are watching right now. So right now, NASA is about to launch a rocket into space, and no surprise, that is the most popular live stream on Twitch. And this is, like I mentioned, the URL of that live preview image we can check out. Uh, however, we have to actually copy this and edit the data they give us back because we have to fill in the width and height of the image we want back. So I'm just gonna open up a text editor, I'm gonna replace where it says width with, let's just do 500 and height by, I don't know, uh, another 500. And let's try accessing this. So we can see a live preview of what's going on in the stream. If we keep refreshing this, and you can see the thumbnail will keep refreshing live, which is cool. There was about a five minute wait I had to do. So it's not a real live thumbnail, but it'll refresh every five minutes or so. So you could like build a dashboard and have like a preview of each of the live streams and show in somewhat real time what's going on. And again, you can adjust the width here to get something a little bit more presentable, like make that 900 and there it updated again and you can keep refreshing and you can see the action here through this live thumbnail. And then we can download this in CSV format if we wanna look at how the relative views compare across the top 100 live streams. So here's the data back, we can see the user is NASA, the title of the live stream and how many people are watching it. So 90K for NASA. And then you can see the long tail kind of drops off like then we get down to like 4,000 people are watching the uh, top 100th live stream right now. Home Sweet Home something. So a lot of these are still like games or esports, but you can see there's still some general topics going on. And if you know the username or you have a curated list of usernames, you can restrict the search to only show back the usernames you're interested in. The other neat thing we can do is get all the videos for a particular user. So if we look at this NASA row here, we see that there's a column called user ID. We can copy this user ID and then feed it to another endpoint to get all the videos. So we can see here on all these endpoints, there's another one called get videos and you can browse all these endpoints. There are a few more I'm not gonna cover in this video. Here's the endpoint and you'll see all you have to do is give it a user ID and can get back all of the past videos for that user ID. So here's this other endpoint on Steve C Data. I put in NASA's user ID over here, my other client ID and token, and we can get all the videos that NASA has published in the past. So we can see the data preview here. This looks like the current one. They have some videos of it. We have the same thing where we have a thumbnail URL, we can get the live preview for it. And we can take a look at this data in Excel. So we can see the names of all the videos they've published. They've published a lot when they publish the videos as well as the view counts for each video. So we can see which of them are more popular, relatively speaking, like this one. We can actually get the link to the video. So we copy it here. We can check out the video on Twitch. We can also get that URL for the thumbnail preview. And there's the preview, I guess they chose. It's a thumbnail of a past video, so it's not gonna live update like the live stream thumbnail will do. And you can see you get a little bit of other information back, like if it's a highlight or an archive, the duration of the video, if it's a long video or not. So if you're interested in maybe building your own content and you wanna get ideas, you may wanna look at this for other popular Twitch channels and you can get ideas on what kind of content to make and what does well. You can also get the followership information back from Twitch. So this is interesting, maybe if you want to build your own recommendation engine or discover other channels or publishers on Twitch you haven't heard of before by looking at the followership graph, you can do that with their API as well. And you can keep browsing here. There are some other advanced things like getting the top games. This is more for gamers though, not for just streaming media. Uh, there's a couple other things here. So I'll have a link to this below and let me know in the comments if there's anything else you wanna see. This is a basic general intro video to Twitch. There's a lot more we can cover. If you'd like, let me know in the comments and I'm happy to make more videos. I hope this was helpful and giving you a tour of the Twitch API. Leave me a thumbs up if this is helping you and leave me a comment and stay data-driven. Thank you for watching.